So one of the things that's that's been striking since we got involved with fenfluramine and acquired the rights to it back in late 2014 um, was just how effective it was at Dravet syndrome. If you go back and you look at the original reports that came out of Belgium, the the two things that really stuck out were the magnitude of effect in terms of the uh, degree of seizure frequency reduction that these investigators were reporting, as well as the durability of the response, which was highly unusual. If you talk to any investigators early in our program, one of the things they said when they read the original report in 2012 was that, you know, we looked at that and thought, you know, we just don't see that kind of response in Dravet syndrome that they're reporting with fenfluramine. So that's what was striking. It was the magnitude of the response and the fact that they had patients who had seizure freedom for uh, sometimes years, um, which is just, you know, highly unusual. And that's what really got us interested uh, in the product. So there were two main data presentations uh, at AAN. The first was from a group of investigators at the University of Washington, and it was really a series of structured interviews of caregivers of patients who had been treated with fenfluramine. And the idea for the interviews was to ask the caregivers, tell us how uh, your child has changed or what fenfluramine treatment has meant to you. So it's asking them in their own words, what are the benefits that you've seen since your child's been put on this treatment? And a few things came out of that research that were um, both very encouraging because it corroborated what we saw in our own phase three data, you know, from our formal assessments and all of our endpoints, but to hear the parents tell you in their own words on a daily basis. So for example, you know, obviously seizure frequency reduction was one of the most common benefits they talked about. But they also talked about the fact that there were less seizure triggers. So normally these children are very temperature sensitive, but you know, they had children that could go out in the sun or could run around and, and, and to a degree and, and play and not have to worry about seizures. So there were fewer triggers uh, that they noticed for the seizures. And then the other thing that they said was that even when seizures happened, there was a shorter recovery period and it didn't impact them as much during the day. So they weren't as, if you can picture someone who has a seizure, oftentimes they'll be very cloudy for the rest of the day. You know, fenfluramine, when a seizure did happen, seemed to, to result in a shorter recovery. Um, so that, that was nice to kind of get that extra color around the fact that we were also, uh, they were also reporting the, the fact that there was a large reduction in the seizure frequency. But the thing that really excited me the most was the non-seizure benefits. One of the number one non-seizure benefits they talked about was improvement in cognition, uh, participation in school, um, learning, uh, overall happiness. Um, so they, they really touched upon a number of outcomes that we've reported from our phase three studies. Uh, we just recently reported within the last year on you know, one year long-term outcomes on behavior, emotions, and cognition, where we showed that there was a significant improvement after one year of treatment long-term with fenfluramine. So to hear them unprompted select those things out and say, this is what we're observing in the home on a daily basis. Our child is you know, doing better with the way they're interacting with the other people in the family in the home. Um, you know, they're doing better at school, to me was really exciting because uh, that really shows how far reaching the impact um, of this treatment is. It's, it's more than just the seizure frequency reduction. We're, we're seeing other benefits as well that the parents and the caregivers are telling us.